Before many could understand what was happening, China quickly became a major global player in making and getting electric vehicles. This momentum shows no sign of waning. Over the past two years alone, the annual sales of EVs in the country skyrocketed from 1.3 million to an astonishing 6.8 million, solidifying 2022 as the eighth consecutive year where China held the title of the world's largest EV market. To put this into perspective, the United States managed to sell only around 800,000 EVs in 2022. This dominance in the EV sector not only provided China's automotive industry with sustained growth during the pandemic but also propelled China toward its goal of becoming a global leader in climate policy. So, how did China achieve this remarkable feat? The government has played a pivotal role in bolstering both the supply and demand for EVs. Thanks to generous government subsidies, tax incentives, procurement agreements, and various policy-driven encouragements, a multitude of homegrown EV manufacturers have emerged. They continue to refine cutting-edge technologies to better cater to the real-world needs of Chinese consumers, thereby cultivating a substantial following among young car buyers. However, the narrative of how this sector reached its current pinnacle extends beyond Chinese state policies. It encompasses the contributions of Tesla, Chinese battery technology researchers, and consumers throughout the broader Asian region. Why China Chose Electric Cars Back in the early 2000s, China's car industry faced a tricky situation. While it was excellent at making traditional gasoline cars, it didn't have any local brands that could compete with foreign giants dominating the market. China realized it couldn't beat the US, Germany, and Japan in gasoline car innovation or even hybrid vehicles, which were already led by countries like Japan. So, China decided to take a bold step and invest in something entirely new, cars powered by batteries. This was a risky move because, at the time, electric cars were mostly experimental and often abandoned by big companies after a short time. However, the potential payoff was huge, it could give China a strong position in a rapidly growing segment of the auto industry. In contrast, countries known for making gasoline or hybrid cars saw less reason to explore electric vehicles. Japan, for example, was already a leader in hybrids, so it didn't feel the need to shift to electric. For China, electric cars offered a solution to multiple problems, like reducing air pollution, decreasing reliance on imported oil, and boosting the economy after the 2008 financial crisis. It seemed like a win-win for Beijing. China also had some advantages in place, like a strong auto supply chain that could adapt to electric vehicle production. The manufacturing capabilities and resources used for gasoline cars could be repurposed for electric cars. So, as early as 2001, China began investing in electric vehicle technologies, making it a priority in its five-year plan, the country's top economic strategy. In 2007, Wang Gong, an auto engineer with experience in Germany, took the helm as China's Minister of Science and Technology. Wang was a big supporter of electric vehicles and even tested Tesla's first electric model, the Roadster, in 2008 when it was released. Many credit Wan with the decision to fully commit to electric cars, and since then, China has consistently prioritized electric vehicle development in its national plans. How the Chinese government boosted the EV industry The Chinese government plays a crucial role in the EV industry. This stems from the nature of China's economic system, which excels at channeling resources into targeted sectors, like they've done with semiconductors recently. Starting in 2009, China began offering financial incentives to EV companies producing buses, taxis, and cars for regular consumers. Back then, only a few hundred EVs were sold in China. However, these subsidies allowed companies to invest more in improving their EV models, making them more affordable for consumers. Between 2009 and 2022, the government invested over $29 billion in subsidies and tax breaks for the EV industry. Although the subsidy program officially ended last year and was replaced by a market-oriented system called dual credits, its impact was already clear. In 2022, China accounted for over half of all global EV sales, 
with more than 6 million EVs sold. Moreover, the government supported domestic EV companies in their early stages by awarding them procurement contracts. Around 2010, before regular consumers fully embraced EVs, they were integrated into China's extensive public transportation system, including buses and taxis. These contracts provided a steady income stream and valuable real-world testing data for local EV manufacturers. Beyond financial incentives, other government policies encouraged individuals to choose EVs. In densely populated cities like Beijing, obtaining a license plate for a traditional gasoline car has been challenging and expensive for over a decade. However, this process was simplified and often waived for EV buyers. Additionally, local governments sometimes collaborated closely with EV companies to create policies that fostered their growth. For instance, BYD, a Chinese company challenging Tesla's EV dominance, worked closely with the city of Shenzhen, making it the world's first city to completely electrify its public bus fleet. This partnership aided BYD's rise in the EV market. Tesla's Impact on the Chinese EV Market China's journey in the EV industry has closely intertwined with Tesla's ascent as the foremost EV company. When the Chinese government introduced subsidies, these benefits weren't restricted to local companies alone. This strategic approach not only prevented international dissatisfaction but also fostered an ecosystem where all players received subsidies, solidifying their participation and commitment. In addition to financial incentives, various Chinese local governments actively pursued Tesla to establish manufacturing facilities within the country. The rapid construction of Tesla's Gigafactory in Shanghai in 2019 was facilitated by favorable local policies. Going from an empty field to operational in around a year was an unprecedented achievement. This process underscored the concerted efforts of both the central and Shanghai governments to clear any obstacles to Tesla's success. At present, China holds an essential role in Tesla's supply chain. The Shanghai Gigafactory stands as Tesla's most prolific production site, contributing to over half of the total Tesla cars delivered in 2022. Remarkably, the Gigafactory in Shanghai produces an electric vehicle every 40 seconds. The synergy between China and Tesla is mutually beneficial. Tesla's presence has prompted the catfish effect in the Chinese EV industry, catalyzing domestic brands to innovate and strive to catch up with Tesla across technological advancements and affordability. Conversely, Tesla faces the challenge of sustaining competitiveness in China as domestic brands vigorously enter the market. The Key Element in Electric Vehicles In an electric vehicle, the most critical component is the battery cells, accounting for approximately 40% of the vehicle's cost. Achieving a commercially viable electric vehicle hinges on having a powerful, dependable, and cost-effective battery. Over the past decade, Chinese companies have championed lithium-iron phosphate batteries, often referred to as LFP technology, in contrast to the more popular lithium-nickel-manganese-cobalt batteries in the Western world. LFP batteries offer advantages in terms of safety and affordability. Initially, they lagged in popularity for vehicles due to their lower energy density and poor performance in cold temperatures. However, while others moved away from LFP technology, a handful of Chinese battery companies dedicated a decade to researching and narrowing the energy density gap. Today, the EV industry is once again recognizing the benefits of LFP batteries, constituting one-third of all EV batteries as of September 2022. China possesses a significant advantage in battery manufacturing, control over many essential materials. Although China may not have the richest natural resources for battery materials, it commands a major share of global refining capacity for critical components like cobalt, nickel sulfate, lithium hydroxide, and graphite. China's proactive pursuit of this control predates the realization of its importance in the EV industry by other countries. While other nations are now grasping the significance and securing deals with countries like Chile and Australia for rare earth metal mines, China's early efforts have established a resilient domestic supply chain for its companies.
Can other countries replicate China's EV success? Many countries are likely looking at China's remarkable achievements in the electric vehicle industry with envy. However, replicating China's success isn't as straightforward as copying their playbook. Can nations like India or Brazil hope to mirror China's EV triumph? The answer is a resounding no. These countries lack the robust traditional automotive industry that China boasts, and they don't possess the same level of sophisticated experience in implementing extensive industrial policies through a wide array of tools, including credits, subsidies, land use agreements, tax incentives, and public procurement. It's not that other countries cannot potentially replicate China's model, but China has honed these systems over decades, giving them a unique advantage. The future of the EV market. For the very first time, Chinese EV companies are poised to venture beyond China's borders and aspire to become global household names. Some are already making their presence felt in the European market and are even contemplating entry into the United States, despite its market saturation and complex political landscape. This represents a significant departure from the days when Chinese gasoline-powered cars could only dream of such feats. However, as they expand, these companies will need to adjust their marketing language and strategies to suit foreign markets. They'll have to conform to varying technical standards and cater to the preferences of diverse software services. Adapting to dissimilar consumer habits and addressing customer service needs will also be essential. Moreover, given the current global geopolitical climate, entering countries with strained relations with China could make these companies more vulnerable. Some nations may aim to safeguard their own domestic auto industries, while others might perceive the entry of Chinese brands as a national security concern. However, one thing is certain: in the coming years, you can expect to see a growing number of Chinese EVs on roads worldwide. Do you think the Chinese EV will continue to dominate? Share your thoughts and leave your comments below. If you like what you watch, hit the like button to show your support. More importantly, subscribe to this channel so that you will receive more interesting videos about the happenings in Asia.